What is up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I am Jeff with Two Moose Design and today I'm going to run you through all the gear I use and kind of why I use it. And then I'm going to run you through how I spray a finish on these trays to hopefully get you started and land a nice clean finish. Alright guys, so we'll start off by running through the gear. I'm going to show you guys all the stuff I use and kind of why I started using it. Anything you see here, I'll have an affiliate link down below, and that'll give us a small kickback if you purchase something through them links, and we really appreciate you supporting the channel. So first of all, the turbine. I've used probably four systems before this. One was an HPLP, and the other three were just entry-level systems, like I used a Homerite, a Wagner, and those systems are good for starting out, but there's just no adjustability, they're all made from plastic, and you just can't really get what you pay for. Versus a higher end system like this, or a Graco, or anything in that HVLP realm, is just mind blowing on how much better it is. So we settled with a Minimite Platinum 4. There's a lot of different sizes. No matter what brand you go with, if you're gonna be spraying paints, I would at least get a mid-level to an upper level size machine, because the smaller machine might be a little underpowered and you'd probably be a little disappointed if you're trying to spray some, spray some thick latex paint. So this is, I would say three quarters of the way up the power scale with the Minimite Fuji systems. Graco also has a bunch of systems that are the same equivalent in size and power. I actually have one here. So as you can see, this is the Graco turbine. She quite dusty. But this is the biggest one they make. Fuji also makes one equivalent to this, but this thing is a monster. It's got fully adjustable speed dials. It turns on, on and off automatically when you push the trigger on the gun, which is super nice. But this thing is massive and most people probably won't need a system like this, but if you can afford it, definitely go with the biggest system with Fuji or Graco. So most of the Fuji systems come with this gun here. Not this cup, this cup is an extra add-on, I'll go into that a little bit. But a question I get asked a lot is should I buy a gravity feed or a cup? And I believe it all comes down to preference and how you spray and what you spray. So for me, I really, really like the gravity feed. But saying that, I spray almost all top coat. I very rarely spray paint. If you're gonna spray 50-50 paint to top coat finishes, I'd probably go with the cup. If you're gonna spray mostly paint, I would definitely go with the cup. It just holds more and it's just, in my opinion, it just works better for the paint. I pretty much only spray poly and stuff like that, so I really like the gravity feed. It's got a fly attacking me. I really like the gravity feed system. And this is what comes with the gun standard, which works fine, but it's just a plastic cup and they end up just wearing out pretty quick and you get a couple leaks and whatnot. So which is why I upgraded to this gun here. But the reason I like the gravity feed with the top coat setup is I use primarily water-based products and then when you're done spraying, I put a little bit of soapy water in here, spray it through, and then I'll spray it through a little bit more and it's pretty much good to go. So the reason I went to the 3M PPS cup is you can get this cup for pretty much any sprayer. You just buy these adapters. Just get these adapters here for any gun. But the reason this is so nice is you can just pop in different finishes and it has these little nipples on here and these cool little containers so it's just less cleaning and it's just an all around better system. But I think this runs about $100 on top of the system. And then as you can see to put it back on after you change your stuff, quick and easy. and just like that. And these also have the screen built into the, the lid here, so you don't gotta strain your material, and it's just, I just, I, don't, I just highly recommend these cups, they are great. But then, as you can see, I spray, a, I spray a ton of trays each week, so when I'm spraying a ton of stuff, this Fuji two-quart pressure pot is amazing. I fill this thing up, I can get through a whole sequence on these in no time. Versus this, you gotta fill it more often, and especially this. This is 500 milliliters, this is like 750 milliliters, and this bad boy is like two quart. So you can just fill a lot in there and just keep spraying and spraying and spraying. So if you're spraying a ton of stuff, I highly recommend the pressure cork along with this system. 
And then I primarily spray poly for ambering finish. I use this Minwax oil modified poly. And I got these cool little mixing pour cup spout things. And then for, this is what I use the most, the General Finishes High Performance Top Coat. I put this on 90% of our stuff, and then this stuff pretty much just goes on hardwoods I want to amber. So now that we went through all that, I went through the system, the cups, why I use it, my finishes, the upgrades. So now I'm gonna walk you guys through spraying some finishes and how, and kind of the basics just to all that to hopefully get you guys laying a better finish or just simply start using your HVLP in general. One last thing. I get a ton of questions on my racking here. I made this racking myself. We designed it ourselves, welded it, made these little holder things on our own. So I can't help you with that. I can give you dimensions and stuff I used, but I can't point you to direction to buy one. And then another thing I use, these Bora tables are amazing. They just collapse up and I throw a piece of plywood on them. So when I gotta change the floor in here to keep everything clean, they just fold up. Or I can just use it out in the main shop and then just build things on it and stuff like that. And that's pretty much all the stuff I use for spraying. One last thing. A tweezers for getting gunk out of your stuff. This is the last and final piece of the puzzle. So now we're gonna start out by setting the pattern, which is how wide you're gonna actually spray. I like to do about a hand width, which is how thick I want it. And then once you set your spray pattern, I like to shoot about a hand width apart. So about a hand width thick pattern, and then about a hand width apart, and then you're gonna overlap about 50%. about a hand width, you can adjust it here, and about a hand width apart. So we're going to spray these hardwood trays. I already have one coat on these, so now that the first coat is complete, I'm going to sand between coats with a 220 foam sponge. I like the foam sponges because I'm a little heavy handed, so it just gives me a little more give. With this nice light pressure and sand the entire surface. And then once you have every inch of the surface sanded, I like to use these cat cloths just to collect any dust just to keep that out of your finish. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that with every tray and then we'll start spraying and I'll show you a few tips and tricks. Now when you spray, you want nice even coats. About a hand width apart, overlapping each one about a half. So nice even coats, just like this, just like you're a robot. You also don't want to whip it, just go past it and avoid doing this. That's no good, just nice and easy. Also, when you're spraying, about a hand width apart, you want it nice and parallel to the surface. You don't want it like this, no good. Nice and parallel, don't whip it, nice even overlaps. Just like that, nice and clean. So here you can see in the light, it's a nice even coat. You wanna lay it nice and thick so it's got enough on there so that it can smooth out nice and even. Then over here, I sprayed it too thin, and you can see there's just not enough on there for it to level out and get even. So you wanna make sure you lay down just enough 
to where it gets nice and glassy, but you also don't want to put too much on there where it doesn't cure correct. So this is what you're going for, not enough. Always a hair. So now I'm gonna move on to spraying all my stain items. And because I have so many more stain items and hardwood items, I use the pressure pot. I go through about three of these to put three coats on all of my items. Because this doesn't have any sort of filtration, I will strain it, which I recommend you do for pretty much anything you use. Unless you use the fancy PPS that has the built-in strainer, always strain it. Another concern people have is having to carry this. For me, it's not a big deal. It's really not that heavy. They do make a bigger system that sits on the ground with a longer hose, but for me, this is plenty fine. What's also nice is this doesn't have a cup. So this is nice and lightweight. Granted, you have to carry this, but you can spray upside down, any angle. So this is super great. So I'll finish filling this thing up and then I'll show you guys how I spray with this and get these things all started. So now I'm just gonna time lapse through spraying some of these trays with the pressure pot. For the first coat on anything, I lay that a little heavy just because a lot of that first coat just kind of soaks in anyway, but don't overdo it. And then on the second and third coats, you're gonna lay down just enough so that I can smooth out, but not too much to where it doesn't cure properly. All right, my friends, thanks for sticking with me. We'll wrap this thing up with the results of the trays. Go follow us on Instagram, like, subscribe, comment down below if you have any tips for new people getting into spraying. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one. And then I'll kind of run through and show you how I lay down the finish. That didn't sound good at all. Things.
and other things. Are we recording?